and Hex with two main deck copies of Goblin Rabble Master, uh, a card that has definitely decreased in popularity. Uh, a lot of that has to do with Hangerback Walker, but in this matchup, it is a great threat. You get it out in front of uh, Dea Dolores removal spell, suddenly Foul Tongue Invocation is shut off, and it represents a lot of damage all on its own. Hicks will take a draw step, another temple, but he will sacrifice a flooded strand, plains or islands on the way. And we'll see if it's a Jace or a Soulfire Grandmaster. Being on the play is a huge deal for Jeskai Aggro in this matchup because Esper Dragon's three mana is a very important flashpoint. Suddenly, Hero's Downfall, Foul Tongue Invocation, and Dissolve are all options. So, whatever work Hicks can do on the first second and third turns to get out in front of that, that class of reactive cards, the better off he's going to be. It is a Jace of Ren's Prodigy. That's where Hicks will begin things. We'll see what Dea Delore can put together here. He'll start off with a Polluted Delta. And there is a Swamp. And Hicks knows that his Jace is going to die. This is the spot for Goblin Rabble Master. Indeed. Right here. And there's the ultimate price. And it looks like the third land's going to end the battlefield tapped. Temple of Epiphany is the land. We'll see what the scry will be. Looks like he's going to leave it on top. Day Delorea will draw. Temple of Enlightenment, top card. Going to the bottom now. Over to Hicks. He'll draw a card. Mantis Rider the draw. There's Goblin Rabble Master. Will that resolve? Well, it will, but Bioblood will kill it before it can make a goblin. Mystic Monastery passed the turn back over to Dea Delori, so he's killing everything that's being played. Another Bioblight was just drawn here for Mike. A painful stumble for Hicks there on that third turn with the land that came into play tapped. Would have been a great opportunity to land the Rabble Master. There's a Jace there for Dea Delori. Hicks will untap and draw, picked up an island. I wouldn't get too attached to that Jace. No, you don't think that one's going to be here very long? I, I suspect not. There's Magma Spray. That'll exile the Jace. Can't use that for Dig Through Time. Rabble Master killed via Bio Blight again. Dea Delori with another Jace. And the way these players are trading off resources, this feels like the first person to get through, to resolve a dig through time is going to pull ahead. Both players trading stuff, running out of action. This is favorable for Dea Delore. He's got better spells in his deck and more powerful top end. But dig through time is, is really the card both these players are trying to get to. Another Jace here. Looks like it's time for a Mantis Rider. Dea Delore with a hero's downfall and a Dissolve in hand. Downfall going to take care of that. Lightning Strike will take care of Jace. So you see this crazy exchange of resources. Dea Delori with a Slumgar Scorn. Hicks with a Dragonlet Ojutai. Ugh. That is painful. Yeah, Slumgar Scorn with no Dragon. And Dea Delori with the first dig through time. Hicks will draw a card. He's got a Shiv and Reef, and now there is Dig Through Time from Dea Delore. You mentioned that this could be the way to pull away from this game. Yeah, I thought that Dea Delore was already favored with Dissolve against nothing, or I guess Jeskai Charm, pretty close to nothing, mm -hmm. with Dea Delore at 19. But Dig Through Time really cements his advantage. And with Dragon Lord Ojitai, it would not surprise me if Dea Delore just simply untapped, resolved it, and tried to go from there. Especially with insurance in play, Haven the Spirit Dragon, even if Hicks can put together a removal spell, like Stoke the Flames, let's say, yep. not that big of a deal. And there is that Dragon at Ojitai. All Hicks can do is draw and very quickly pass the turn back. Looks like it's time for Dan Delory to come to the red zone. Jeskai Charm is going to try to put it on top, but Dissolve is going to stop that from happening. It's an aggressive use to Dissolve, but it's one that I personally kind of like. I've seen this before from Esper Dragons players where they are willing to be very aggressive at pushing through Dragon Lord Ojutai with counterspells. It's a one-for-one -one trade, and 
triggering Dragonlord Ojutai is how you generate an avalanche of an advantage. A very passive play there would have been simply to put it back on the top of the deck, recast it next turn, and then try again the turn after that. But Dedalori really just trying to exert his advantage right now by connecting with Dragonlord Ojutai. There's a temple. Take a look at the top card. Leave that card on top. Pixel draw. Stoke the Flame is going to go after the Dragonlord Ojutai, and it looks like that's going to work. However, De Deloria has built such an advantage, and he has a Haven of the Spirit Dragon out there on the battlefield right now that can return the Dragonlord Ojutai. So how much work did that Stoke the Flames really get done? Well, Hicks had to cast it, but not getting him all that far. Dismal Backwater going to gain Micah life. Hicks will lose a life with his land. That's Flooded Strand. Got to very quickly search up a plains or an island. There's a Plains. Pixel draw. There's a Temple. Take a look at the top card. That'll stay on top. Dan Deloria will draw now. He's got a Dragonlord Salumgar. He's got a 1-1 Salumgar split here this weekend. Oh, there's another Dragonlord Ojutai. I was going to say, Dan Deloria looked like he was waiting for the ability to play a Dragon with Scorn backup. Mm -hmm. Was a land short of doing it with Salumgar, but with Ojutai, he's ready to go. Looks like we have a dig through time here in response to Dragonlord Ojutai. Man, dig through time is a very powerful card, so I wouldn't be surprised to see De Delore try to counter this with the Slumgar scoring that's in his hand. But well, he just says that's fine. Wow. Doesn't care at all. Wild Slash among the cards found, which is not particularly good right now. Two cards selected. Rest go to the bottom. One thing we've noticed while we've watched De Delore play, and this is the third time we've watched him play this weekend, very patient. Yes. Uh, you know, he's got this play pattern of being very aggressive, pushing through Dragon Lord Ojutai, being very aggressive, protecting it. And once he gets ahead, not really caring about the opponent drawing cards. There are some spots where I thought in previous matches, maybe he would counter an Obzon Charm that was looking at two cards. And he always declined. He was saving it for critical stuff. There's an island. Stoke the Flames going to go after Dragonlord Ojutai. Now, Dea Delori, I think, is going to fight over this. Even with Haven, the ability to get it back. We saw this before, and this seems like an even better spot to be aggressive pushing this through. Yeah, this is where we see him pick his fights. Dragonlord Ojutai going to hit. Another Slumgar scoring going to be added to the grip. Only two hits away now, and he even has an answer for Jace. That'll be foul on invocation. Dragonlord Ojutai on the battlefield, so no need to reveal. Nadalori will gain four life. And now we head Hicks's way. An island in hand. And perhaps another dig through time here. I'm curious to see if Nadalori will counter this one. If he didn't counter the first one, I don't see much of a reason to counter the second one. His hand might just be so loaded up that he feels like he can afford to counter this. I guess the, the calculus is somewhat different here because Dragonlord Ojutai is vulnerable to removal, that he would have to fight over Stoke the Flames if Hicks found that. So with enough cards in the deck that he would have to counter anyway, maybe better to counter that, but not the first one. Now you saw Dissolve take care of that dig through time. And Mike Dea Delori is going to win a game number one here over Stephen Hicks. Esper Dragons up a game here over Jeskai Agro. And now we take a look at the sideboards here from both players. And for Hicks, he's got two Anger of the Gods, three Disdainful Stroke, and Elspeth Sun's Champion, a Glare of Heresy, two Mastery of the Unseen, two Negate, and Orbs of Warding, and two Rending Volleys, and a Revoke Existence. So the three Disdainful Strokes, the two copies of Mastery of the Unseen, and the two copies of Negate, very, very good in this matchup. I think that the at least one copy, maybe both copies of Rending Volley will come in, as it's a good answer to Dragonlord Ojutai. I'm not a big fan of Elspeth in this matchup because I think it's way too hard to resolve, and Slumgar the Drifting Death is such an efficient answer, but if Hicks wants to play more of a late game, he can bring in the Planeswalker as well. On the other side of things, 
Seems like we've seen Mike sideboard a couple of times now here this week. And the two ofs, the foul tongue invocation, disdainful stroke and drown and sorrow. And all those one ofs, Ashiok, ultimate price, orbs of warding, perilous vault, stratus dancer, Dragonlord's prerogative, languish, Dragonlord's slumgar, and thoughtseize. I think the removal spells in this matchup and the sweepers are, are both reasonably powerful. I think Hex is probably boarding into enough counter spells and enough of a late game deck where Dragonlord's prerogative becomes uh, attractive to bring in here as well. I think you can justify the Stratus Dancer. Hex probably has to cut a lot of his cheap red removal. And if his deck is a little more top heavy, a little more clunky, uh, Stratus Dancer could be very good in helping him win some counter spell fights. Those are the options there for both players. And game number two will be underway here in just a moment. Now, we will be in Milwaukee next weekend for the Open Series, a bit of closing the standard format. But if you're looking forward to Battle for Zendikar action, especially the limited format, and heck, even the brand new Commander product, Grand Prix Atlantis is definitely where you're going to be. November 13th through the 15th, you can get this awesome play mat and do a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah, it's going to be a very Commander-focused Grand Prix. We're going to have a lot of artists, John Avon as our guest of honor, along with a lot of the staples of the Commander community, Sheldon Minery, Benny Smith, MJ Scott, will be available to, discuss, to do panel discussions discuss the format with you. And of course, we're going to have a three-day Grand Prix battle for Zendikar Sealed. So a lot going on November 13th through 15th in Atlanta, Georgia. Pretty hard not to love everything that's going on with this tournament. StarCityGames.com slash GP Atlanta for all the information. And we'll be rolling out more information next weekend in Milwaukee and all throughout Season 4 and leading up to that Grand Prix. So we hope to see you guys there. And we hope to see you guys in Milwaukee next weekend if you'll be around the area. But for right now, we are here in Worcester. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, Nick Miller, the rest of the SCG Live crew. 450 players came to do battle here this weekend. These are the two that are left, and eventually one of them is going to hold the trophy. Right now, it looks like it's going to be Mike DeLore, who has been very impressive with Esper Dragons this weekend. This deck disappeared for what feels like forever, but it is back now and in a big way here in Worcester. And it's been cool watching Mike play in part because he seems like he has a very rigid order of operations for what he cares about in various matchups and what he's trying to do. He's very aggressive about protecting his life total in the matchups where that's relevant. Uh, he tries to push through Dragonlord Ojutai as soon as possible, is very aggressive at making sure Dragonlord Ojutai connects, and is willing to let uh, the opponent draw some cards in spots where it looks like he has pulled ahead. It's been very consistent. We'll see if Hicks can come back as he's got some good sideboard options. And his main deck configuration is pretty good against Esper Dragons, too. But he got blown out of that game, that's for sure. Well, both players were kind of bouncing off there. And you, you saw one of the issues that Jeskai Agro has in the matchup is in a spot where both players were top decking and the first person to find something substantial would probably pull ahead, Hicks drew Jeskai Charm. He's got a couple one ofs and two ofs, some, some weird mixtures of removal spells there, and uh, happened to draw one at a really bad stage for it. The Delore, on the other hand, was drawing Dissolves. And then when Dictor Time rolled off, he was able to really pull ahead because there's less fidginess with his draws there, at least game one. Now, Hicks becomes a lot more smoother and streamlined in the post board games. Gets to cut some of the shocks out of his deck and bring in more counter spells and uh, mastery of the unseen, so that helps a lot. But but game one was an issue with, you know, sometimes this guy has these dis disconnected draws. You you have a mixture of removal spells; they don't always work. And Esper Dragons capitalizes on decks that are constructed that way. Well, it is time for both of these players to take a look at their opening hands. We'll see if they can find something that they like here in just a moment. But keep in mind, the Open Series comes to Milwaukee next weekend. I'll be, be joined by Matthias Hunt, Ken Crocker, and the rest of the SCG Live crew as we put a close on this standard format. It's been one heck of one here, as you see Esper Dragons and Jeskai Aggro. I think you put it really well yesterday. This was a standard format where you can play really whatever you want to do and have a lot of success with it. Now, the metagame is fluid, and you've got to be playing one of the right decks from week to week, but there was never a very clearly best deck in the format. Uh, you, could, you could argue, I guess, Abzan has kind of been that to varying degrees throughout the course of the season, but certainly people have had success with all sorts of decks, and there's been some weeks where Abzan has not performed well. Temple of Epiphany is where Hicks has begun. Dismal backwater here for De Delore. A battlefield forge and the passing of the turn. De Delore will draw. It's a polluted delta. 
Now here's a Plains and a Goblin Rabble Master. Slumgar Scorn Force Spike style. Gonna slow that down. And Mike elected to do that in lieu of casting Ultimate Price, probably a representation that he does not have a dragon in hand. And the Ultimate Price could end up being very good. It could also be very bad if Mantis Rider comes to town. Foul telling Invocation over the draw, so that'll give him a nice, clean answer to that. There's Urborg. Temple the draw. That's a Shivan Reef and just a passing of the turn. Temple of Triumph here from Hicks. Top card gonna stay on top. Data Lori draws a copy of Crux of Fate. Here's a Thought Seize. Able to cast it off a Haven of the Spirit Dragon thanks to Urborg. Ojatai's Command. Two copies of Dig Through Time, a Jace. And a Valorous Stance is what Stephen Hicks is working so with. So Hicks trying to sit on his heels here instead of casting the Jace that's likely to die, trying to hold up Ojatai's Command. But now working with the information, I think that Ojatai's Command is going to be very poor if Hicks tries to leave it up the whole game. There goes Ojatai's Command. Now here's Jace. Foul Tongue Invocation going to take care of that. No dragon to reveal, however. And Data Lori will draw another copy of Foul Tongue Invocation. All I can do is pass the turn back. Hicks picks up another Jace. I think we're going to see a repeat performance. Foul Tongue Invocation will take care of that. Data Lori with a Temple. Top card. We'll see where that goes in just a moment. And Dea Delore plays this sort of waiting game much better than Hicks does. Uh, something that Hicks can try to resolve if he happens to draw to blow this open is Master the Unseen. Mm -hmm. Then he can play that game very effectively. Heroes down for the draw here for Dea Delore. Hicks looks like he's going to try to resolve a dig through time. This Salumgar score is going to be pretty painful, I think. Yep. A repeat of the first one. Mm -hmm. Just pay one more, just one. Hexel draw. Mystic Monastery. Back at Dea Delore's way. Another Slumgar Scorn. Couldn't go three for three, could he? There's a Jace. I think Dea Delore considering dissolve here. Looks like the Dissolve will be attempted to be cast. And I can appreciate this play from Dea Delore because his hand's a little jammed up on blue mana right now. You see he's only got three blue sources of mana play and a lot of double blue. So part of this play is just to get a double blue spell out of his hand to be able to play more efficiently down the line. Because of Urborg, he can more easily play several black spells in a turn than he can several blue spells. Negate going to take care of Dissolve, it appears. Looks like Jace needs an answer. Do you follow players in the legacy community who are born to face the tax information? Take them another step. Nick Paulson, Jack Chase, and another lamb there for Mike. Case of Coilo shows up. Jace gonna go active. There's ultimate price. Valor Stan's gonna make it strong. Good work here from Hicks. Cashing in a car that's hard to be too productive with. Evan, 
There's this little backwater. Got to get that Jace off the battlefield, though. With, with Dig Through Time and Hicks's graveyard, this feels like a very important threat to answer. All right, here's Hero's Downfall. You can see, I think it's more efficient to use Crux of Fate in this spot as Hero's Downfall is cheaper, it's an instant, it, it plays against some things like Elspeth, but the risk of Disdainful Stroke is so high here that I think that uh, Mighty is just going to err on the side of the conservative play. We dig through time. Don't get scorned again. <laughs> At least make him have a dragon. Yeah. Don't get three for threed. All right. Dig through time. This one resolves. Take a look at the top seven. Looks like Master of the Unseen is in there. Make it two Master of the Unseen. Rending Volley, Soulfire Grandmaster. A lot of options. Two to the grip, five to the bottom. And th this game is a display of some of the vulnerability of Esper Dragons. That just does not have a lot of card drawing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have Dig Through Time or Dragon Lord Oshitai, it's hard for you to maintain a stranglehold on the game. As opposed to decks like Blue Black Control, Blue White Control, where you have Jace's Ingenuity alongside some of these cards. You're able to get some card density going there. Yeah. That's not something. Dandelory can do in this particular game and in his deck. And now the mixture of cards that, that Hicks really wants here, Master the Unseen, in conjunction with Negate in hand, really good spot. Here's Jace. Rending Volley going to take care of that. Probably the cleanest answer in the format to Jace. Master of the Unseen going to make another manifest. And this is a way to run away with the game because Dandelory doesn't have a good answer to this card at all. No. Uh, enchantments are a bit of a weakness for this deck. We saw Matt Costa struggle against Thopter Spine Network. Yep. Much the same story. Dismal Backwater will gain Mike a life. Let's see what the Unmorph is. Oh, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Mantis Rider here. Mantis Rider tapped and attacking. This might be a first. Yeah. <laughs> Time to untap. And draw. That's land number eight, I think, for double manifest each turn. And I, I can't imagine Data Lawyer able to pull out of this. This this is just so hard to overcome. Crux of Fate, sure, that can clean things up. And, and that's if Hicks lets it. He's got disdainful stroke and a gate in hand. Yeah, and that's going to do it. Stephen Hicks going to tie things up here against Mike DeDelore. Jess, Jess Guy Agro, Esper Dragons getting ready here for game number three. Mastery of the Unseen. We haven't seen it for a real long time. Looking very powerful there. Yeah, M Mike has some weird outs to that card. It has to be something like Slumgar the Drifting Death with another dragon. And then that can permanently lock out manifest tokens. Yeah. But he doesn't have a clean way to get it off the table. It's a huge vulnerability. And with it only costing two mana, it's not that hard for Hicks to sneak it through. Well, we'll take a look at the sideboards here for each player one last time as game number three about to be underway. You see Stephen Hicks with a little pep in his step after getting crushed game one. He looked good there in game number two. And we're going to have a very interesting game number three here. And Dana Lori going to be on the play this go around. We saw some of the cards that he had in his deck after sideboard. Not sure if too much changes on the player of the draw, however. And an issue that Hicks has in game one is that he's got... You know, you go through this roster here of a Jeskai, Charma, Magma Spray, two Wild Slashes, three Lightning Strikes, two Stoke the Flames. It's very easy for him to resolve Dig Through Time and not find much to do about anything. Uh, you know, he's just finding a couple Burn Spells, maybe one Threat card. He's going to have some Dig Through Times like that. Post-board, with a lot of that stuff removed from the deck, he's going to find removal that answers everything, like Rending Volley, or Counter Spells, or good Threat cards. And so his Dig Through Times are a lot more threatening in the post-board games. For Hicks, looked good that game. Master of the Unseen showed up, and it 
played a huge role in things. Negate very good as well. Rending Volley does a nice job against a lot of Daedalorian's threats. Jace and Dragon Lord Ojitai. So I like the cards he's bringing to the table as well. And it wasn't even like Master of the Unseen showed up on the second turn and snuck through. That was way down the line. Yep. But once it showed up, uh, it felt like that was probably going to determine the game, and it did. Well, these players shuffle up here for game number three. We got to talk about our season three invitational champion here on the Open Series. It's Alice Pistecki. It's his token. It is here. If you need a germ, you get to play with Alex in a couple different ways to go about getting this starting October 2nd. Yeah, congratulations to Alex Pistecki, our season three invitational champion. Several ways to get this token. Any registration for a two-day $20,000 Open Series event, any registration for a 5K Premier IQ, both the ones we run here on Sundays during the Open Series events, and ones that you can bring to your local area. And all orders from StarCityGames.com, $5 or greater, beginning October 2nd, noon Eastern. Look at that, Jerv. What a great token. Every time they make a new token, I'm always just blown away. Yep. You know, it's just, I, I, was, actually, I was actually in the home office of uh, Star City Games in Roanoke a little bit earlier this week, and I saw, uh, I saw Kristen working on this, and I was just like, oh, man, that's so awesome. Yep. It's so awesome. She's so good at the tokens that she makes. I can't wait to see the next one that comes down the pipeline. Do you know if, the, if that turtle in the vial there is of particular significance to Alex, or is that just a creative flair? I think that's just him again. No, I know, but, but does he have a does he have a pet turtle? Is there good question? Unclear. Have to ask him the next time I see him. I'm not entirely sure, but I do like that it's him holding him. I think that part is fantastic. Good old germ token. You can start getting that one October second here on the Open Series. Temple is where Day Delory will start. Gonna leave that card on top very quickly. Shivan Reef. Here from Hicks, game number three of our finals from Worcester underway. An island, a Jace. We'll see if Hicks has a card like Rending Volley just yet. Doesn't appear that he does, though he does have a Jace of his own. He'll sacrifice. I thought about it. Okay, he will sacrifice Flooded Strand. Hicks is a bit more vulnerable in the post board games to an early Jace. He does have copies of Rending Volley, but. I imagine his lightning strikes, wild slashes, magma sprays, they've all been cut. Mm -hmm. And so an early Jace on the other side of the table is a lot more likely to survive. And it's not like there are a lot of Jaces running around Data Lori's deck, but it can be problematic. So a little bit of a Jace battle here between the two players. If you're not used to this just yet, you better be starting when Battle for Zendikar comes in, because I got a feeling this card is going to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Almost too good for it not to be. The only thing keeping this card under wraps for a while was just the proliferation of aggressive red decks, mm -hmm. especially with Searing Blood. But if those decks are on decline, this card's going to be all over the place. Temple of Enlightenment's the discard. There's a Swamp. Perhaps a Hero's Downfall on the way. Foul Tongue Invocation. Who knows? It'll be Foul Tongue Invocation. No Dragon to reveal, however. Now, this is a spot again for Goblin Rabble Master. Hicks has not gotten it to work just yet. Does he have it this time? He'll go with Mantis Rider. And that's not bad. No, but it's not as good as Rabble Master would be in this spot. Fouling Invocation, the draw. You see the difference right away yep. between Mantis Rider and the Goblin Rabble Master. There'd be a Goblin token out there to sacrifice. Now, Day Deloria would have worked herself into a Bio Blight. But at oh. least Hex would have been left with some loose change. Yeah. This will backwater the discard. Foul Tongue Invocation is going to be cast right now, which I like. You don't want to get hit by a negate or some other counterspell. Temple of Deceit here from De Delori. Top card, bottom. Kick it over to Hicks. Hicks will draw. He's got a Shivan Reef. He's passing the turn back. De Delori will draw. Jace Activation. Salumgar Scorn. I still believe no dragon to pair with it. Mm -hmm. One of the weaknesses of Esper Dragons. You don't have a dragon in hand or on the battlefield. Those cards are certainly worse. Jace going to flip into the Telepath Unbound. Starts on five. Elevator goes up to six. There's Caves of Koilos. Here's Ochtai's Command. And Salumgar Scorn. Just four spikes been good enough. It sure has been. <laughs> 
Dragon Lenoch tie the draw. See if De Delore is willing to go for that. He's going to start by moving Jace up. He's been a very patient player. He'll just pass the turn back. Some risky business going into the guy with a bunch of Oja. Oja ties commands in his deck. Yep. Sample strokes. Jace is going to come back. Bioblight looking to take care of it. Yep. See what's next here for Stephen Hicks. Well, many of his creatures are, are, are plays he can't really make right now because of Jace simply flashing back a removal spell. There's Battlefield Forge. That's it for Hicks this turn. Is it time for Daedaloy to start making it rain? I, I still think he can hold off here for a while. All right. We're well, going to pursue a different route. Now, I only like because he has a second one. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So he doesn't have to worry about getting hit with uh, an Ojitai's command. So here's a dig through time. It would be only the same full stroke, and he'd be under no pressure next turn with another copy in hand. Yep. So a calculated risk, but a fine one. Now, things do get a little bit difficult here for Day Delore, however, because that Soulfire Grandmaster, sure, it's an O2 right now because of Jace going up, but the long line of text on being able to rebuy spells with that card very relevant right now well I, I think that hicks's hand is about to get forced here because i can't imagine soulfire grandmaster is going to be staying around for much longer unless hicks is willing to fight over it hicks has found a copy of rending volley i think the glory is just going to go start flashing back removal spells and, and try to fight it that way sure temple a little scry action here Today, Delorey will go. Jace the draw. Jace will tick up. He is threatening the ultimate next turn. Okay. And I, I don't know if the <laughs> ultimate's even good. Don't know if that's a route. You can see De Delore is showing a lot of respect for Rending Volley here, not attacking into a single red. Yeah, we have seen him be so patient this weekend. We watch him play. I think that I would have preferred there for Mike to cast the Jace first, see what happened, and then maybe flash back the removal spell instead. Oh, ha ha. Steven Hicks has a Dragon Lord Ojitai. You think about that. Pass the turn back. One thing I noticed about Hicks during these games, two and three, they've gotten long. He's the aggro deck here, so you imagine he wants to shorten things up, but he's never panicked. And no. his deck can definitely go long with, with Esper Dragons. That's why I like his position in the matchup. Because he has negates, sample strokes, and Master of the Unseen, he doesn't have to try to win the game by turn seven. He can, he can play a slower game. There are draws he can put together where he wins that early, but he, by no means does he have to do that. tough squeeze and Dragon Lord Ojitai is getting a lot less powerful because of rending volley post board. You, you can see it too. You know, one mana clean answer uncounterable. Because often the value you get out of Dragon Lord Ojitai is I know my opponent can kill it, but at least they've got to leave up their hero's downfall mana and I can go about my business doing other things. But rending volley at this stage is trivial for Hicks to leave up for the entire game and uh, Dragon Lord Ojitai, the ceiling looks to be trading with Hicks's Dragon Lord Ojitai. And that's not great because Hicks is pulling away uh, with card advantage in a number of different ways. Jace, it's going up on Soulfire Grandmaster, pass the turn back. 
I'm curious if maybe the ultimate on Jace is a is a viable way to go. It's it is so anemic right now. Dead Delore has three spells in hand, so the ultimate is mill for fifteen, which is not well, anything to write home about that, at this spot. That's not impressing anybody, no doubt. Rabble Master in hand. Master of the Unseen was the draw. Here's an attempt to resolve the very powerful enchantment that won Stephen Hicks game number two. It looks like it's in there, and if that's the case, that's bad news. Here's a dissolve, however. Will dissolve resolve. Looks like the answer is yes, it will. Dragon Lord Ojatai coming on in. It's not afraid. And if Dea Delore really respects this Dragon Lord Oj the possibility of running volley, I, I feel like he's got to make a block at some point here. Well, this will change some things potentially. Though, you know, Hicks slow playing this negate looks like it might work out to his advantage in a big way because we could have had a big fight over Master of the Unseen. He decided not to do that. And with negate still in his hand here, this is a really nice thing for him on that thought seize. However, Jace will allow De Delore to flash back. That's big too. All right, well, he's, he's carved out a path here to start attacking if he wants it. He can strip Running Volley out of the hand here. And if he's got a removal spell... He's got Hero's Downfall, too. So he can take care of the opposing Dragon Lord of Jatai. Still not in the clear here by any stretch because of Dig Through Time and, and Goblin Rabble Master on the other side, but De Delori has gotten this game to a point where... He's connected with Dragon Lord Ojatai. Salungar, Scorn, Foul Tongue and Vacation, Jace are the three cards that he's looking no. at. I mean, this was this was very well set up. I thought uh, Dea Delori was looking pretty helpless here, but I thought he's off the top. Suddenly he can punch through, and it's looking like a game. Yeah, I miss the fact that he could flash back the thoughts he's. That's the big deal there. I figured the negate would be really useful, but actually not very useful at all. Now there's Hero's downfall. So now, De Delori has Dragon Lord Ochitai's superiority. However, Stephen Hicks does get to resolve Dig Through Time, so he's going to do exactly that. And we'll see what he can find in these top seven cards. Yeah, a lot of good stuff can come off the top here for Hicks. Uh, another copy of Rending Volley would be especially good. So far, Grandmaster's going to get an opportunity to attack Jace. That's pretty nice. Stoke the Flames would be great. Valorous stands. Just literally anything that gets Dragon Lord Ochitai off the table. And Hicks has to feel pretty good about his spot. But if he doesn't find it, uh, you know, you're not sitting comfortable anymore. I wouldn't be feeling good at all then. Oh, Mantis Riders are an option. He really wants to put, put some pressure on in the air. That's the way to go about doing it. Looks like Hicks has selected two cards. Can't forget he gets to take a draw step too, so he could find the answer. He took Mantis Rider's Daneful Stroke. Let's see what that draw step is. Temple of Epiphany. Looks like it's Mantis Rider time. Could be Rabble Master time too. There's Temple, top card, becomes the bottom card. Jay's going to bite the dust. Three damage will come across. Looks like it's going to be 8 to 10. Let's make that 10 to 10. Can't forget about the life gain there from the Soulfire Grandmaster. Hicks will just pass the turn back. Did not want to play Goblin Rabble Master. Yeah, I would rather leave up to Sainful Stroke. And uh, I can respect that because either Salumgar coming down now is going to be hard for Hicks to beat.
Dragon Little Ochi coming across. Hicks gonna fall down to five. You got a trigger. Crux of Fate looks pretty nice right now. However, Hicks does have disdainful stroke in hand. He's found what he's happy with. And it is Crux of Faith. The question is, what order does he want to play his spells in? He's got Foul Tongue Invocation and Bio Blight in hand. He's got enough black mana to do both. The thing is, I, I think that his, his Bio Blight Foul Tongue Invocation turn is probably better than the Crux of Fate. And he gets to play around Disable Stroke, just as a nice little bonus. Island the draw here for Hicks. There's Goblin Rabble Master. Now, this needs a response. Yep. And he will respond. And I think that's just it. Yeah, Disdainful Stroke and land in hand. You respond to the Rabble Master with Foul Tongue Invocation. Stephen Hicks loses Mantis Rider, wow. and that is going to do it. Mike Dan Delora is going to win this game and match here in Worcester. And Esper Dragons off the power of Jace and the power of Dragonland Ochtai gets the job done. Mike Dan Delora, your champion here in Worcester. That, that was just, that was great stuff. Uh, there's no two ways about it. I thought I thought game three he was beat. Hicks had all the tools. Running volley to check Dragonlord Ojatai.